Good morning. This is Paula from the Giadon Library, and this is Paula's Picks. Today, I have stories about bears. My first one is called, Where is Bear? It is written and illustrated by Jonathan Bentley. Where is Bear? Where is Bear? Where could Bear be? Is Bear in the drawer? Is Bear on the shelf? Where is Bear? I saw him here somewhere, but where? In the bathroom? Up the stairs? Is Bear on the table? Is Bear under the sofa? Do you see Bear? Where is Bear? Where could Bear be? On the swing? In the car? I just don't know. I'm getting tired. I want to sleep. Where is Bear? Have you seen Bear? What? Where? Where is Bear? There is Bear. I found him, Bear. Please, little toy. Here is your Bear. Good night, Bear. Good night, Bear. <laughs> Did you guess that? He was looking for a teddy bear for his bear. So that's where bear was. Now I'm going to read you one called Pup and Bear. It is written by Kate Banks and is illustrated by Naoko Stoop. It's called Pup and Bear. Whoosh! went the great gray owl swooping down, screeching, hoo, hoo. The Arctic wolves knew that the big freeze was on its way. They took shelter in a snowdrift and they listened to the fierce wind holler and roar. They watched the snow blow in spirals, wrapping the world in a fluffy white coat. But then the wind's bitter cold breath turned warm and the sun appeared. The big melt came and one lone pup found himself on a sheet of ice spinning out to sea. There he is. Poor little pup. The pup slid into the water. He swam and he swam. When he reached land, he burrowed into a snowbank. He was tired and he wanted his mother. The pup closed his eyes and fell asleep, listening to the throb of silence across the still landscape. He woke to, feel, to the feel of a cold nose against his fur. The smell was familiar. It was a polar bear. You are not my mother, said the pup, flattening his ears against his head. I am not your mother, said the polar bear, but I can cuddle you and keep you safe. The pup was shy and frightened. Aren't you going to eat me, he asked. Polar bears eat wolves. Not this one, said the polar bear, shaking her head. Climb on my back 
and I will take you to my den. The pup stretched a paw forward cautiously. Then he climbed onto the polar bear's back, and they crossed the tundra under the watchful eyes of a trio of baby puffins learning to fly. Back at the den, the polar bear licked and cleaned the pup. I am not your mother, she said, but I can feed you and keep you warm. The next day, they set off across the wintry tundra. When they spotted a walrus with long, sharp tusks, the polar bear bellowed and chuffed, protecting the little pup. Where are you going, asked the pup, as they moved near the water. I am not your mother, said the polar bear, but I can show you where to catch a fish. They passed a snow goose perched on a nest of eggs. They sniffed the trail of a seal as he tried to outsmart them. And they stopped at the water's edge where the fish and the lemmings came and went in the wondrous world of life. The sun shone down on the crisp, crackling snow, and the polar bear rolled in a snowbank. Come on, she said to the pup. I am not your mother, but I can play with you. But when the pup tugged too hard on the polar bear's fur, the bear growled. I am not your mother, she said, but I can scold you. Then she nuzzled the pup and tickled his tummy. <laughs> Tired at last, the pup curled up against the bear, and they napped, listening to the wind whimper and sigh. The earth turned round and round, and the big freeze came, followed by the big melt, until at last the polar bear nudged the wolf, who wasn't a pup any longer. I am not your mother, she said but I know it's time for you to go. She nuzzled the wolf one last time and the wolf nuzzled her back. Then he walked out into the big wide world. The wolf howled into the midnight sun, which glowed on the horizon where day ended and night began. And he was answered by the cry of another wolf. Soon, he was leading his own pack across the frozen tundra. Then one day, the wolf came upon a polar bear cub huddled in a snow drift. Where is your mother? asked the wolf, but the cub didn't know. The wolf sniffed the cub and rubbed its fur with its wet nose. You are not my mother, said the cub, cowering. I am not your mother, said the wolf, but I can cuddle you and keep you warm. Aren't you going to eat me, asked the cub. Wolves eat polar bears. Not this one, said the wolf, shaking its head. Climb on my back and I will take you to my den. The polar bear clambered onto the wolf's back. I am not your mother, said the wolf, but you can stay with me until you're big enough to be on your own. And the wolf led the pack back across the tundra along the path that went round and round into the wondrous wheel of life. <laughs> so he took care of a polar bear cub. Isn't that sweet? Now let me read you one called Little One. It is written and illustrated by Joe Weaver. And I am reading this with permission of Peachtree Publishing, Publishing Company Incorporated. Little one. Big Bear stepped out of her den. I like these nice big pictures too. By her side, half asleep and blinking in the spring sunshine, wobbled a tiny cub. 
There's so much to discover in your new world, little one, said Big Bear. Can you see the little cup? It's right there. It's tiny. She led her cub to the forest where new life was stirring among the, the trees. This is where our journey begins, she says. Big Bear showed Little One how to be gentle with friends. And how to enjoy the long summer days. Little One watched Big Bear and learned how to fish. and how to swim safely in the cool forest lake. I'm with you, little one, said Big Bear. <clears throat> Together, they explored far and wide <clears throat> and filled their hungry tummies with ripe autumn berries. Little one played in the blustery wind, but Big Bear felt restless. She knew that winter was coming. It began to snow, and as cold flakes settled on the ground, Big Bear led their way out of the forest. Together, they climbed up the hillside. For a moment, they stopped to look back at their land, now covered in snow. The wind roared and the snow piled high, but Big Bear found their old den. And it smelled of home. In the warm darkness, Big Bear and Little One curled up together and waited for spring. <laughs> Which is probably what bears are doing now, huh? Finding their dens again and going to sleep through the winter. So the last book I have is a very funny one called A Perfect Day. And it is written and illustrated by Lane Smith. Nice big pictures also. A Perfect Day. The warmth of the sun felt good on Cat's back. Cat liked to be in the flower bed where the daffodils grew. It was a perfect day for Cat. The cool of the water was what Dog liked best. When it was hot, Dog sat in the waiting pool that his friend Bert filled for him. It was a perfect day for Dog. Birdsey. Bird topped off the bird feeder with it. It was a perfect day for Chickadee. Squirrel went up the pole. Squirrel went down the pole. Squirrel could not get to the seed. Bert dropped a corn cob onto the grass. It was a perfect day for squirrel. Uh oh. It was a perfect day for squirrel. It was a perfect day for chickadee. It was a perfect day for dog. It was a perfect day for cat. The warmth of the sun the cool of the water, a belly full of corn and seed, 
a flower bed for a nap. It was a perfect day for Bear. <laughs> he ruined their day, didn't he? I love that book. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a bear cave with a bear in it. Here's the autumn one. And for this, if you come out to Jaidon Library, I have a kit to go that has most of the stuff that you need for this craft. It has the instruction sheets. It has the blue piece of paper to, to paint on, draw on, glue on. It has the brown semicircle that's going to be the inside of the cave. And the half of a paper plate that's going to be the outside of the cave. It has fall colored construction paper to cut leaves out of. It has two eyes for the bare eyes. And if you have paint, it has Q-tips that you can dot the paint on your thing, like the trees that I did. So what you want to do is you do have to cut out. You'll need scissors. The kit doesn't have that. You need to cut out the circle right here on the paper plate so that it's open. And then you want to glue the brown piece of paper down and then the paper plate over it. There's your cave. And then if you want to make trees, these are autumn trees. I mean, you don't necessarily have to make two. You can make one. You can have a bush, whatever you want to make to make it look like autumn. And then that was where I used the Q-tips and dipped it into paint, autumn colored paint, and then just dotted it all. But if you don't happen to have paint, if you have um, crayons or markers, you can draw leaves on or make other colors. And then the construction paper that's fall colors is to cut out all these little leaves and decorate the cave like all the leaves fell on the cave. And then you put the little eyes. It looks like a bear in his cave. And there you have a bear in a cave. Now, a second one that you could do same thing, except make it a winter scene. So you'd have the same kind of cave because the paper plate is under there. Only this time I markered um, bare trees. So it looks all wintry. And then I colored a little moon. So you can make it look like a winter scene, have winter all around. And then I glued cotton balls on top of the outside paper plate, put the little eyes on again, and then there's a bear in a cave in the winter time. So if you can come by Jai Down, we'll have the kits for you that have the autumn type, but you do have to have like paint or crayons or markers to color everything and glue and the little scissors to cut the little circle out. But thank you for joining me. That story is about bears. And on next Monday, I, we will be making fireworks in a jar on steam stories. So you have a good day.